Hi, my name is Adrian William, and today I'm making a video for uh, candidates who just got an invite or will be getting invite from University of Southern California, USC's dental school. So last year, after I got accepted to NYU and Colorado, I got accepted to USC last year as well, and later on UCLA as well. But um, I'm going to share my experience with you guys and how it went for me and what were the some of the learnings that I was able to contemplate out of the experience I had from last year. And if you like my content, if you like my channel, do hit the like button, do subscribe to the channel. It's a great motivation to come up with good content and to share it with you guys. So for the USC, last year they didn't had a bench exam and one of the fascinating thing about usc is that they had two kind of interviews so two steps the first one was mmi and the second one was pbl and what's pbl pbl is problem based learning and i'm going to divide them separately so for mmi i made a video the link is in the description after this video you can click on it you can watch the whole mmi thing and if you have any questions you can ask me uh, but for the PBL part, it's the problem-based learning. And what they, it's a learning technique or a learning style which USC uh, strongly believes in is that they put you into small groups and they give you task assignments and other learning methods uh, that you have to complete, activities that you have to complete within small groups. And they simulate the same kind of environment or the same kind of situation for you during the interview. And why do they do that? Because you might be the best dentist, you can do the best clinical preparation for a crown prep, you might have the best speaking skill or the best managerial skill, but if you don't know how to work with other human beings in a team or a group setup, that's gonna be a big, I would say negative trait or attribute for you to get into the school because in United States pretty much most organization they don't want people with the highest IQ they want people with the highest EQ that is the emotional quotient so you should be sensitive enough especially being a medical practitioner that you can read off other people and you can work in a multidisciplinary approach and you could be cohesive towards reaching goal with your team players and what happens during the interview they divide you up into small group and they have somebody from the faculty or they could have the program director or somebody uh, from the school sitting in that team in my case it was uh cory himself who's actually the program i would say he's a coordinator for it he 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 deals with all the admissions and all the uh, task related to that so he was in the team as well and they gave us one question and they gave us a amount of time that the this is a scenario and there are a couple of questions regarding this and you have 10 minutes and we would like you to discuss this one by one and they will be recording you and they will be observing you so you're in a group with a couple of people that you don't know and you don't know their amount their intelligence you don't know their previous background their education system and you're pretty much playing with them in a group and you have to show that you're a good player and there are a couple of things that you need to understand that in this kind of situation everybody is collaborating and competing at the same time this is a this is a really good, uh, I would say, concept for me to kind of understand that whenever you're in a team, you are collaborating and at the same time competing, but there are some dynamics, some parameters that you should be aware of. You can't be overly competitive and act like a jerk. That's very important. And you can't be so collaborative that you actually end up killing yourself in the game and you're being so much of a sacrificial lamb that your turn never came in so you need to find the right balance and how do you do that this is very important what i'm going to tell you and it took me a little bit of uh, time to go through some research to find this but for all interviews people who are highly extrovert and people who are good looking usually get preference over other people. I know this sounds uh, obnoxious and it's not very good to hear, but 
yes people who are extrovert and who have a good uh, physical appearance comparatively they get more preference over other people and that's uh, it is what it is and I hope the schools or the admission committees can actually go through this research and actually read this this is for truth and one thing while I was reach reading this research and I was thinking about this but there's always a way out it's not like if you're not an extrovert you can't come up with something that could make you impressive so I've actually in my life I've learned to adapt this skill I was born with an extrovertive kind of uh, nature I've been an extrovert I speak a lot and that's one of the reason I make YouTube videos but on the other hand I've uh, over time taught myself to be introvert because if you're working in a group and there's somebody who's more experienced than you who is a uh, more extroverted than you and maybe he has a more charming personality and if you start to compete him ambitiously and trying to overexert your speech and showing that you're uh, you're also trying to compete that person it's not going to give a very good vibe because now you're chasing something that is way ahead of you and you're going to make a mockery out of yourself so what's the solution and this is one of the things i help candidates with not just candidate even other people that being an introvert you can actually say very few words but if they are meaningful and you know what you're saying and you're saying at the right time with the right essence of your thoughts you can make a much more impact than those extroverts and this is something which i learned over time through some experiences through some reading and I would encourage you that if you're preparing for this PBO, you should be well aware when to speak and when not to speak. A wise man is that who can convey his message with the bare necessity of words. So you don't have to say more than what is required, but you can convey your message in a very positive way. And let me give you my personal uh, experience. When I was in the group, there was one female uh, candidate, I think she was from India, and she was really good with her words and she was an extrovert and I could see that she was pretty mature with her ideas and they were very well articulated in that group. And when I was listening to her, I was, and it takes a lot of effort from somebody that I actually end up admiring them, but she was ad admirable when it comes to her interview skills. And I knew that I not, I'm not going to ambitiously try to compete her in that group and look it will just it will just make me look foolish and childish so what i did is i waited for her to speak and finish what she's saying because she was saying it good and she was making sense so i thought about that because she was saying doing so good let her make her mark and then i will wait for my turn and i will say very few words that are required because I'm not going to try to beat an extrovert who's more extrovert than me. And that's how you kind of judge and analyze. I have made a video uh, last year before the interview where I said this, that if in the group there's somebody who has 12 years of experience as an endodontist and you're a fresh graduate, then don't try to say something in the group that, that the other person can easily negate. You should be emotionally intelligent and smart enough to know that if there's an endodontist sitting in the group, if there's somebody who's far more experienced than you, then do not try to make a statement which can easily be nullified or you are not sure of. So you don't wa want to open up a whole new can of worm. So be very aware of what kind of environment you're sitting in. And beside this, one of the things that I can help you if you're one of the candidates who's going to be uh, interviewed is that I can help you understand the personality type of the people that you're going to be dealing with because you should be well aware when you're listening to other people some people and I'm telling you out of my own personal experience that sometimes people have inferiority complex superiority complex I know people when I sit with them they will continuously tell oh my dad drives a Mercedes my dad drives this he smokes a Cuban cigar or he my dad has God knows what kind of mention and when he keeps on flexing one muscle 
in my head i'm thinking you you keep talking about one thing one strength in your life what's your weakness what are you trying to hide and this is something you learn from psychoanalysts like it's a kind of a psycho branch of psychology which teaches you when people are over flexing some muscle they have some kind of inferiority complex that they are trying to hide and if you look very closely like if you're sitting in a bunch of dentists and somebody keeps saying oh my root canals are the best i did this research this research and he's over flexing his muscle then you're trying to understand why is he doing it what is he trying to compensate for because most of us humans are compensating and if you look at them closely and if you understand then you realize that what's going behind in their head and which most people don't even know and then you can be a part of that group in a manner that is more constructive and you can say things that are more meaningful rather than competing with the person who's already compensating so these are a bit of a complex ideas but during my one on one session with uh candidates during group sessions i try to communicate these ideas and the candidates do get a recording of these sessions that how they can communicate more effectively and one thing i you might hear me again and again during my videos that i say avoid the hack and crack mentality and let me tell you what i mean by that what i mean by hack and crack mentality is if in us they call it snake oil marketing or uh, in pakistan or india if you travel somewhere uh, in a bus in a train you will see somebody walking up into the train or the bus and comes and tells you about a powder or in in urdu i would say churan so they come and tell you about a herb about a powder that they are saying this is a powder which can fix your alopecia hair fall loss or which can help you with fertility within 2 days and these these are clickbaits people sell you things or tell you stuff because they know you're desperate and they will tell you about quick fixes because that gets them money and that gets them attention and that gets them what they want but what i try to convey people and which it took me a lot of time to understand after being exploited through different phases of life is that critically think is it possible or what they these people are saying how much truth is it so if somebody is selling you uh hacks and cracks avoid it and one other aspect with this whole term hack and crack and you need to understand this concept every word from a linguistic point of view have some kind of connotation if i say excel in your life strive for excellence what happens every word i say or every word anybody says actually triggers an emotional response in your brain and when you use the word hack and crack those are very negative terms if you speak them in front of anybody it will trigger a negative response in their brain i'm talking internationally i know in some part of the world it's a clickbait people want when they hear these terms they want to buy things because these are quick fixes but when you listen when you compare them and listen listen to them from an international perspective they are a very negative word they have very negative connotation and i've thought about this why i'm saying this if you lived in us for a while and you came here you bought a cell phone you got your atm bank account after a couple of days you will call get a scam call and that scam call will be from a part of the world which where people would have an accent similar to mine and they will try to scam you and they will try to hack you so comparatively this word when when in us anybody says oh i'm trying to hack and crack a interview or a course or something like that that sounds very negative and i would highly encourage you to not use these kind of words i know these are very good for marketing and people like to use it and sell it because they want to get what they want in life but you as a consumer should be reasonably smart and especially talking to doctors and dentists that you should be smart enough to analyze that if somebody is trying to sell you something like this what's the 
connotation behind it and is it worth it in your life because you one thing i keep telling people sometimes you have to lose a match in order to win the tournament stop thinking about the match all the time think long think about the longevity of life longevity of your profession the longevity of your vision in life a purpose in life and those are very important questions that you need to understand that sometimes you have to pay more sometimes you have to avoid the things that have to be avoided in order for the longevity of the good and i hope this this video actually helps you out because it takes me weeks maybe sometimes even months to articulate my ideas before dental school i was able to write them down i was able to think but now since time is becoming more uh, of a high commodity for me but i do try my best to think about my ideas i do try to create an anti thesis for my own ideas to understand where i'm i am wrong and some of time i do figure out i'm wrong and sometimes my friends and family have to tell me but uh, i hope i convey my message in a very positive manner if you like this video do hit the like button and i do appreciate your feedback you the feedback i get in comments messages texts emails appreciate that and hopefully i will see you in a more meaningful video if you need any more assistance or help you can reach out to me uh, through the contact given in the description see you soon in a more meaningful video